Well, as I've been saying a lot lately, democracy in the United States may not be long for this world. And certainly, if it survives, it will go through a very rocky period over the course of the next couple of years. And the midterm elections are going to, I think, test how strong American institutions are and whether or not democracy can be protected by these institutions when you have a number of people who are trying to tear it apart from within. But before we get to the really horrifying news, I want to first start out with some hopium, because the very first insurrectionist who stormed the Capitol on January 6th is facing political consequences, not jail time, but political consequences, and they're being removed from office. I'm, of course, talking about Coy Griffin, the founder of Cowboys for Trump. And as HuffPost reports, a New Mexico judge has ordered a Donald Trump supporting county official to be immediately removed and barred from office for participating in the deadly capital insurrection on January 6, 2021. In his ruling on Tuesday, District Judge Francis Matthews said that Otero County Commissioner and Cowboys for Trump founder Coy Griffin is disqualified from holding office under the 14th Amendment because he engaged in the insurrection after taking an oath to support the Constitution as an executive officer of the state. Now, this is a really big deal because the last time that somebody was actually removed from office under the Constitution's insurrection-related clauses was 1869. And, you know, at some point, you'd think that somebody would face some political ramifications for participating in the January 6th insurrection. Marjorie Greene didn't. So far, Trump hasn't. But this individual who's currently holding office, he's out. Now, he was really let off easy up until now because he got arrested on January 17th, convicted in March, and he was sentenced to just 14 days. 14 days in jail. And, um... A $3,000 fine. All this after storming the Capitol, bringing guns and ammunition, calling for war. He got 14 days in jail and a $3,000 fine. And this is a sitting public official. So the fact that he's now barred from running for office, that is really important. However, here's where we get to the bad news. He's just the tip of the iceberg. If we were to bar every single insurrectionist and charge all of them, like bar all of them from running from, for office and charge all of them with crimes, that still wouldn't necessarily protect democracy from election truthers because 538 just released a report and what they found is genuinely astonishing. More than one in two Americans will have an election denier on the ballot this fall. Now, we're going to dive into the details here, but this doesn't necessarily mean that most of these election deniers will win, but enough of them will win to sufficiently change the composition of the Republican Party, at least in the House of Representatives. And now we're going to have one of two parties effectively be hostile to the very simple notion of democracy. So let's get to the breakdown here. So out of 529 GOP primary winners, 195 are full-blown 2020 election truthers who either falsely claim that the election was stolen from Trump or they tried to overturn the election themselves by taking action to do just that by either voting or not voting rather to certify the results or joining lawsuits intended to overturn the election. Now, an additional 61 have concern trolled about the election, either questioning its integrity or refusing to state whether or not they believe that the election was legitimate. Another 17 just refused to answer a question about it when they were asked, and 98 didn't have comments, which implies that they're possibly riding the fence or deliberately trying to avoid stating their position because it could be unpopular within the GOP's base, which is a problem. And now here's the total breakdown. So just 30% of Republicans running for office who won their GOP primaries either fully accepted the results of the 2020 election or they accept it with some reservations. Now, here's where the data gets really disturbing. In the House, 126 election deniers and doubters are poised to win their House races. Now, in the Senate, at a minimum, three election deniers seem poised to win. And when it comes to governor's races, six election deniers and doubters are either poised to win or they have a great shot at actually winning. Individuals like Carrie Lake out of Arizona. Now, I'll link you to their page where you can look at the data in your own state. This is my state of Oregon. Now, as you can see here, it looks a little bit better because the election deniers that we have that won their GOP primaries, they have a very small chance of winning, but that's not necessarily the case in all states. And currently, as it stands now, this could change, but Republicans are poised to take back the House. 
So we're going to have one branch of Congress be dominated by election deniers who have power. There's a lot that they can do to put their election denialism into practice. They could impeach Biden for claiming that he stole the election. They can conduct investigations, form special committees to investigate election fraud. There's a lot that they can do. And even if they fail at all of these things on a practical level, they can still elevate the salience of this issue by focusing on this since all of them believe it. Now, I don't necessarily know if they're just pandering to the GOP's base and they don't really believe this. It doesn't matter, though. It's a distinction without a difference because we have a lot of election truthers who are going to Congress. That's something that is a definite possibility, is, is a reality. And we have to grapple with that as a society. What do we do? If they didn't participate in the insurrection, then there's not really a way to bar them from running for Congress short of passing laws saying you are disqualified from running, running for office if you, you know, are, are an election truther or something like that, the constitutionality of a law like that would be dubious, right? So there's really nothing you can do. You can hold all of the January 6th insurrectionists like Coy Griffin accountable, but that's not going to stop all of these election truthers from taking power. And that right there is the thing that we're grappling with as a country. What do we do about this? Can we try to educate them? That doesn't really seem to work because their minds are riddled with conspiracy theories. Do we try to educate the GOP's base? Well, that's difficult too because they are plugged into Fox News, Newsmax, and they're getting co constant misinformation. So what do we do? And there's no easy answers. We can't make a difference on a micro level. Changes have to be made. Societal changes have to be made on the macro level. But certainly I think that we should start by talking to our family members who denied the results of the election. But either way, a wave of election truthers is going to flood Congress. And what does that mean for the long-term health of democracy? I don't know, but it seems bad if you ask me. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast, sad. <laughs>